Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at negative numbers and how we add, subtract, multiply and divide and some of the common misconceptions and common errors that people uh, make. So the first page here is purely adding and subtracting and it's very important to realise that the rules we use for adding and subtracting are completely different to multiplying and dividing and that's probably one of the biggest uh, mistakes that people make is they try and apply the same rules to both multiplying and, and dividing with the adding and subtracting. So as I said, they're completely different and we'll have a look at a few examples uh, now to try and address some of the issues that crop up uh, when dealing with these numbers. So always recommend drawing a um, number line here to help you because uh, people always tend to get the right idea of what's going on but they then always make silly mistakes especially when we start dealing with negatives here so just to make things easy just to make sure you get the uh, right answer it takes 30 seconds highly recommend drawing yourself a very quick number line so let's get started with the first one so nice and easy four add three we all know that that will be seven but I want to address the point here the first number in all of these is always your starting point on the number line so every single number the first one here is where you start the next bit the add tells you whether you go up the number line or down the number line adding tells us we go up the number line and the next number tells us by how many which is why we have four we go up three and we get seven no difference with this one first number is our starting point which is six we take away which means we're going down the number line and we're going down four one two three four to get two minus three is our starting point so i'm starting on minus three again we're adding so i'm going up the number line i'm going up five one two three four five so i get two and again, minus six here, that's my starting point. First number is always my starting point. I'm taking away two, so I'm going down two, one, two, I'm on minus eight. And they're the most basic of calculations. Where it gets tricky and where people start to make mistakes is when you see something like this. It's always worth pointing out as well, guys, sorry, back to this example here, where we have minus six and we're taking away two, people go, ah, two negatives make a positive. That's gonna be when we talk about multiplying variables and not to be confused with, with this one here. Minus six is the starting point, going down two. As I said, when we come to these ones here, this is where, again, people make mistakes. So where might you see a plus plus or a plus minus or a minus plus or a minus minus? This is when you may be substituting values into a formula or uh, substituting values into an equation. You need to solve it. When you're substituting exactly, you might have instances like this. Could also occur when you're using something like the quadratic formula and you have like minus b and b happens to be a negative. So that's the sort of thing that might crop up. And again, we need to know the rules. How I like to think of this is ice cubes and hot coal. Thinking of it as temperature tends to make things a little bit easier to understand. So what I mean when I say coal and ice cubes is when you have a positive number like plus three, I imagine this is hot coal. Okay, so basically a positive number is hot, so coal, and minus seven here, so a negative number would be ice cubes. And if we use that connotation where positive numbers are hot coal and negative numbers uh, ice cubes, you should be able to work out what all of these are. So let's do the first one. So just like above here, the first number is your starting point. So I'm starting at one. So imagine this is temperature, so one degree. And I'm going to add three hot coals. So the add here means I'm going to add them. And this is a positive three. So I'm going to add hot coal. So if I add coal, my temperature is going to go up. So I'm going to go up the number line. And because I'm adding three, it's going to go up three. One, two, three, I'm on four. Okay, let's do this one then. So first number is four, so that's my starting point. This time I'm going to add minus seven. So I'm adding a negative number. I'm adding ice cubes. Now if I add ice cubes, my temperature is going to go down. So I'm on four, and I'm going to go down seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm on minus three. 
Okay, next one here, first number is five. So first number is always your starting point, so I'm starting on five. This time I'm going to take away a positive number. So I'm going to take away coal. So if I throw coal away, my temperature will end up going down because I'm throwing away something that's hot. So I start at five and I'm going to go down eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we're minus three again. And this is again the uh, probably the most common one where people make mistakes. My first number is a three, so I'm starting on three, and I'm going to take away a minus number, so I'm going to take away four ice cubes. So if I'm holding four ice cubes and I throw them away, my temperature will increase. It's going to go up. So in this case, I start at three, and I'm going to go up the number line four times. One, two, three, four to get seven. And you've probably heard people say if you take away a negative number, you end up adding it. And that's why. Think of it like temperature. If you take away ice cubes, your temperature will actually go up. So let's have a look at it with some negative numbers as a starting point. But the same rules apply, except your starting point is just a negative. So this one here, my first number is minus 2, so I'm going to start on minus 2, and again I'm going to add a positive number, I'm going to add coal, so I'm going to go up the number line, because I'm clearly going to get hotter if I add coal, and I'm going to go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is 3. This one here, my starting point is minus 4, so there's minus 4, I'm going to take away coal, I'm going to throw some coal away, so I'm going to take away a positive number, which means I'm going to go down, so I'm from minus 4, and I take away coal and go 1, 2, which is minus 6. Starting point, minus 1, I'm going to add some ice cubes, so if I add a negative number, so I'm adding ice cubes, my temperature is going to go down, so I'm going to go down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is on minus 7. There we go. And just like over here, I've got minus 7, so I'm starting on minus 7. I'm taking away ice cubes. I'm going to throw some ice cubes away, so my temperature is actually going to increase if I do this. So I'm on minus 7. I'm going to go up by 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I end up on 2, like so. Also what you could have is something like this, where you actually have a couple of different numbers. So notice that this one is in brackets, so I have to do this one first. So I'm starting on 5, the first one there is a 5, and I'm taking away 3 ice cubes, so my uh, temperature is going to go up. So I'm on 5, I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, I'm now on 8, and then I'm just going to take away 4. So just like here, if you take away 4, it just means I'm going to go down. So if I'm on 8, go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm back on 4. This one here, sometimes you see this in a question, which is specifically asking you about negative numbers. Don't let it put you off. It's just letting you know that this is a minus 2. By putting the minus 2 in brackets, it's just letting you know it's a minus 2. And let's just work it out. So I'm, first number there is minus 6, so that's my starting point. I'm going to add two ice cubes, so my temperature is going to go down, because I'm adding a negative number, so adding ice cubes. So 1, 2, and I'm going to add 7. So just like over here, I added 3, just go up here, exactly the same, just go up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which is minus 1. Exactly the same concept here, it's just telling you that this is a minus 5. So my first number here is a 3, so that's my starting point of 3. I'm taking away ice cubes, I'm taking away a negative number, so my temperature is actually going to go up. So I'm going to go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I'm actually just going to take away 8, so it's going to go down 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which is 0 like so. And then I put this last one in here, very similar to this. 5 is my starting point. I'm going to take away a negative uh, number, so I'm going to take away an ice cube, so my temperature is going to go up. But I just wanted to show you how to do this on a calculator. So you just press 5 as normal. You take your subtraction away and definitely put it in brackets. It's not so much an issue in this particular case, because the calculator can recognise it, but I'll show you a case when we start multiplying where it doesn't work. So it's always a good idea if you're taking away uh, a minus there, and don't use a negative here, you can do, but it's better, and you can even see this one here, that little minus has got brackets around it. That is a minus number, and you notice it's slightly different in size. So 5, take away, minus 1, stick it in brackets, essentially just copy that exactly, 
and then you'll see you get the answer of six because if we're taking away a one ice cube, our temperature is going to go up by one. Okay, so it's just using that button there, that little minus with uh, brackets, to represent a minus number. Okay, that's adding and subtracting. Let's have a look at multiplying and dividing. So here we have some examples, and this is probably actually easier than the adding and subtracting, because if you have a positive number, and you can times or divide, doesn't matter which one, a positive number times by a positive number gets you a positive number. Likewise, a positive divided by a positive gets you a positive. A positive times a negative gets you a negative result. And a positive divided by a negative also gets you a negative result. A negative times a positive gets you a negative result, same with dividing as well. And then finally, a negative times a negative, this is where that concept, uh, conception of two negatives make a positive comes from, because a minus times a minus gives you a positive. But that's only if you are timesing or dividing. It's got nothing to do with adding or, div uh, or uh, subtracting. Another way to remember it, if they're the same, if they agree, so two positives make a positive, and down here, two negatives, so they agree, so the outcome is positive. The only time it's negative is when they're different, like this. Okay, so it's just a little way uh, that hopefully will help you remember how to do these things. So let's have a look at some examples and we'll see what happens. So 6 times 4, positive times a positive, is going to give me a positive answer, and obviously 6 times 4 is 24. This one here, if I just ignore the minus first, 5 times 3 is 15, but I had a negative and I times it by a positive. In other words, they are different, so actually my answer will be negative as well. Again, I'm going to ignore the minus here. 7 times uh, 8 is 56, and I have a positive times a negative. They're different, so one's positive, one's negative. They're different, which means my answer will be negative. And finally here, if I just do 2 times 9, I obviously have 18, and then a negative times a negative, they're both the same, negative times negative gives me a positive answer, so I'm absolutely fine, I can do that. So you might be thinking, well what happens if I have more than one number, like I've got in these ones here? Good question. Essentially, every time you see a negative, it changes your answer. So if I do... 2 times 3, which is 6, times 4, which is 24, I have 1 negative, so that means my answer is negative. If we look at this one here, 4 times 5 is 20, times 4 is 80. I have 1 negative there, so that would change it to a minus 80, but I have another one here which changes it back to a positive. So essentially, every time you see a negative, you change it. Um, so this one here then, what happens if we have three negatives? So 1 times 7 is 7, times 5 is 35. So I have a negative one here, so that would mean this becomes minus 35. Then I have another one, which means it goes back to positive 35. And then I have another one, which changes it again to minus 35. So that's the other way that you can think about it. Every time you see a negative, it changes your answer, or the sign in your answer. And as you remember, when I said about the calculator before, this is where it is crucial. Because if you have minus 5 squared, that just means minus 5 times minus 5. And as we know from this rule here, a negative times a negative is a positive. We should have the answer of 25. However, if you put minus 5 squared into your calculator, you'll notice it comes out as minus 25. And the reason it does this is it uses bid mass. It does 5 squared first and then takes it away. So that's why it becomes minus 25. So it's crucial, as I mentioned in the previous um, page, is to stick it in brackets. So if you have minus 5, bracket, that little minus button 5, close the bracket, squared, and then you do it, you get the answer of 25. Okay, so just a little heads up there, be careful with a calculator. If you do have negative numbers, be safe, stick it inside brackets. So let's have a look at some dividing then. So it's exactly the same rules. 24 divided by 8 is 3. They're both positive, so my answer will be positive. 56 divided by 7 is 8. 
that's positive, that's negative, they're different, so my answer will be negative. Or again, using this concept here, I have one negative number, so I change my answer to a negative. This one here, 64 divided by 8 is 8. And again, 1 minus uh, and 1 positive, so a negative divided by a positive, which means they're different, which means my answer will also be negative. And the final one here, 144 divided by 12 is just 12. So minus divided by a minus. They both agree, they're both the same, so my answer will be a positive. Or again, the negative here will change this to minus 12, but another negative will turn it back to plus 12. Either way you want to think about it, both work. And then finally, you might have something like this which combines timesing and dividing. So we can't actually do any division until we've dealt with the top. So we must deal with the numerator, or the top bit first. So 12 times 4, so positive times a positive uh, gives me 48. Then I can divide that by minus 2. Now I'm dealing with a uh, positive divided by a negative. But let's just do 48 divided by 2 first, so that's going to give me 24. And then because they're different, or I've got one negative, that changes my answer to minus 24. So let's have a look at this next one. Again, I'm going to work out the top first. So minus 6 times minus 6. Minus times a minus is a positive, which is 36. Or again, going back through what we said here, 1 minus turns out to minus 36. Another minus turns it back to positive. And then we divide by 4 which of course is 9 and 36 divided by 4, positive divided by positive is, um, gives me a positive answer. And then finally, what do we do if they're all negative? So minus 8 times minus 10, minus times a minus is a positive, so that's going to be 80, all divided by minus 5. So again, once you've done the top, um, you can then do the bottom. So uh, 80 divided by 5 is 16. Positive divided by a negative, so they're different, so your answer will be a minus. Okay, so again, just, just a reminder, when you multiply and divide, you use these rules, and they are different rules to when you are adding and subtracting. Okay, you have to think of them as two separate sets of rules okay but if you remember that hopefully you'll get these questions right in the exam so best of luck guys hopefully that helps thanks for watching